Are you a sole trader and want to take out a mortgage? On this video, I'm going to share the do's and don'ts of how to prepare for your mortgage as a sole trader. Coming up. Hey peeps, how's it going? My name is Alex Kerr and I'm a qualified mortgage broker. My passion is helping business owners obtain mortgages. On this channel, we share the best mortgage tools and tips for sole traders and limited company owners. Let's jump into the video. If you're new to this channel and we're meeting for the first time, please consider subscribing. So let's start with the don'ts, all right? Don't mix up your personal bank account transactions with your business bank account transactions make sure you get a business account, okay? You must keep them separate because if you don't, it's gonna be a much bigger task for the mortgage lender to have to sift through all your statements and work out what's business, what's personal. It could lead to your mortgage being declined. Do not attempt to do your own self-assessment returns if you are not good with numbers, you're not good with paperwork, that sort of thing. Find someone who will help you or get a bookkeeper to help submit your accounts because if you make a mistake, it could lead to fines, you know, incorrect tax amounts, hassle you don't need. Do not ignore any tax letters. If it comes from the HMRC, that is vital you file that somewhere safe because that will have important reference numbers your tax office deadlines you know tax end year dates that sort of thing keep all the documentation in a folder put it in your shelf it's not it's not difficult okay so do's let's have a look at the do's i mentioned you know not to get a personal bank account or keep your transactions um in a personal bank account get a business bank account, okay? It's what they're meant for, you'll get proper statements and have a look at the different lenders, what they offer. You know, you need to set up how you operate in order with your bank account. And what I mean by that, you know, if your business is largely cash transactions, obviously you wouldn't want a business bank account that penalizes cash transactions. You know, if your bank account is doing lots and lots and lots of faster payments or back payments, you know, you don't want one that penalizes back pay backs payments and faster payments, you know, or charges a higher amount. Make sure your bank account is set up specifically for how you run your business. Be sure to keep a track of all your invoices and all your expenses. Just get a, get a folder, you know, month by month, January to December, and just hole punch them. You know, get your invoices in the relevant months, get your receipts or your um, in the relevant months as well, and then it makes it a much easier job when doing your, you know, self-assessment or your tax return at the end of the year. Bank account operation. Okay, so, make sure to run your bank account nice and smoothly because when you come to apply for a mortgage, your mortgage lender will very likely want three to six months worth of your business bank statements. So make sure you're just buying things relevant to your business. You know, you're not putting lunches on there for yourself. You're not mixing personal use with business use. And make sure when you're paying yourself, you know, you're paying yourself regularly, not lots of small amounts dotted all over. It will make it harder to work out what's going on. I know it's harder in the early years when cash flow, you need the money quickly, that sort of thing. Just try your best to smooth that out as time goes on. Tax documents as a sole trader. So this is the most important part of preparing for a mortgage. There are certain tax documents you may not be aware that you need. You know, if you've done one year's trading or more, make sure every year's trading that passes, you are getting the following documents, okay? Starting with one, a SA302 document. It is the document which shows your tax calculation. All right, SA302, and that will be accompanied by what's called a tax year overview. All right, the tax year overview will give an overview of your tax year and will show and prove to the lender you have paid your tax, okay, which is also vital. 
I also recommend heavily to keep hold of your SA100 document. This is your submission form, which holds all the data that you submitted or your accountant submitted to the Inland Revenue. Okay, sometimes the mortgage lender will need that. If you keep hold of those three documents every year, year in, year out, SA302, tax year overview, SA100, you're not going to go wrong when it comes to applying for a mortgage. Make sure everything's on there. You know, if you own other properties, all that sort of thing, make sure your self-assessment, your SA302 documents everything correctly. All right, that's how you prepare for a mortgage. That's how you will get a mortgage. So start doing that today. If you've been trading for one or two years and you don't have any of those documents, um, you can either get them from your accountant who will help you with it, or the inland revenue. Now, I will provide a link to our tax guide documents in the show notes, download it, it will show you what the documents look like and exactly how to obtain them. Question of the day, are you struggling with any of the documents that we have spoken about? SA302s, tax year overviews, SA100. Is it a struggle for you? Is it stopped you getting a mortgage? Let me know in the comments. As a responsible broker, we are obliged to tell you that your home may be repossessed if you do not keep up repayments of your mortgage. Thanks for checking out this uh, video today. You know, please consider subscribing or ringing the bell if you're new to this channel. Until next time, Mortgage Chain are bringing you the best mortgage tools and tips to sole traders and limited companies owners. Keep crushing it and we will talk soon.